I want to kick off by asking you about some of the things we've heard from the panels earlier today. A lot of conversations about volatility in the oil markets, where the right price would be for investment. How do you take a look at this and what's your strategy? I think overall it's an excellent start of the year. Uh, Atlantic Council is well recognized as a think tank and uh, they're discussing the right and relevant topics to the industry. So we've heard from the ministers, we heard from uh, uh, energy experts, uh, industry executives about their view on the uh, energy landscape, spe especially for the year 2019. And overall also the impact of technology and the structural changes happening to the economy is uh, going forward. What is the thing that you're most cautious about moving into 2019? Is it growth in China? Is it the geopolitical headwinds? Trump Twitter fest? What is it that really weighs on you as you look to strategize the bottleless next moves? I think overall uh, the markets remain in, uh, in a big uncertainty going forward, uh, driven by some trade tensions between China and the U.S., uh, but we as an investor, we would love and like to see uh, stability and certainty. So uh, people were asking during the event today about what, we, what would be the right oil price. And our answer has been very consistent. We don't look at an absolute number. We look at stability and visibility on the oil prices going forward and what market conditions will dictate these uh, changes in the oil price going forward. So as Mubadala, we're an institution that pays attention to the details and looking for these trends that may impact our decision on the energy and non-energy sectors going forward. Let me see some of the investments that you're looking into in Asia specifically. What are some areas of interest? Yeah. We both the merger between IPIC and uh, Mubadala Development Company, we took a deep dive onto the, uh, our combined portfolio and uh, we also uh, developed a strategy that uh, based on our understanding of the structural changes happening in the oil and gas in particular uh, going forward. Uh, so our conclusion in the, uh, in the uh, petroleum and petrochemical is that we will focus on uh, emerging markets, uh, markets where they enjoy relatively strong growth going forward and that's why you see us active in countries like uh, Pakistan, Southeast Asia, and Asia in general, because we believe that the future growth in the oil demand and in the, in the energy demand in general will be driven primarily by these uh, geographies. And in terms of that demand growth, there are a lot of questions about how China's demand is going to really impact the surrounding region. Are you worried about that? The growth in China? I think uh, China remains to be uh, one of the leading uh, economies globally, so we're paying attention to what's happening in that part of the world. Uh, we've seen strategic initiatives by China in terms of uh, you know, uh, expanding more in the, into the LNG, uh, primarily driven by uh, air quality. And, uh, but the growth in China, although we've seen a, a slight softening in the in the growth uh, lately, but it will remain one of the key engines to drive the growth going forward. Uh, so we are adjusting our view on China and in Asia in general uh, based on what's happening in that part uh, 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 of the world. Hi, I'm Joanna Bersacci and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.